Today we talk about LinkedIn and how you should use it. This show is for everyone working at the coalface. Digital, business, marketing, social. This is At The Cold Face with your host, Jason Greenwood. I'm Jason Greenwood. Welcome to episode 53 of At The Coalface. Well, welcome to my new studio. Well, it's not exactly a studio, but it's a, it's a new home office that I'm setting up. Just uh, just shifted house. So sorry there's been a bit of a, a delay in getting content out recently. It's been a couple of weeks, I think, since I've actually put a full episode of At The Coalface out. Uh, for those of you listening on the podcast, you can't really see this, but I uh, urge you to go and check out the video series on YouTube or on Facebook so you can see uh, what I'm talking about here. So, yeah, so moved into a, a new house, um, uh, and it's 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 good. It's really, really nice. It's still rural. I love living out in the country. love uh, retiring from the crazy office uh, office, office shenanigans and being able to come home and being able to sort of be out just completely away from, from everything. So it's a nice place to be. Um, this, this extra bedroom um, is not going to be used as a bedroom, so I decided to turn it into a little bit of a, a studio, if you will. I uh, got lots of work to do on it. As you can see, it looks like I'm uh, in a dungeon, I think, but, um, but uh, a great start um, to being able to create a space that I can create content uh, on a hopefully a little bit more frequent basis, a little more consistent basis, uh, as well as having sort of a consistent, I guess, theme um, to, to the setting as well. So uh, welcome to the new space. Uh, so today I want to talk about something that I've been thinking about for quite some time and, and was trying to think of the best way to, I guess, articulate it. But um, I'll just cut right to the chase. Going to talk about LinkedIn and how you can use that to further your career, to further your personal brand, to further your sphere of influence. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I do a lot on LinkedIn. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. I've spent a lot of time crafting my profile, trying to make sure that it accurately represents me as a person and, and me as a professional, uh, as well as using the the LinkedIn Pulse platform, which is really their publishing platform. It's like a blogging platform. It's like a it's like a digital news platform as well. So it's it's kind of uh, it's a little bit like a like a bulletin board in some respects as well. So, um, but definitely because the content from Pulse gets indexed in Google, um, you know, my, my first uh, my first ever article that I wrote for LinkedIn Pulse has had over two, uh, 10,000 views now. Haven't ever managed to, to have another article that's done quite as well as that first one, although I keep, I keep trying, I keep aiming at that, that, uh, that target every single time, but it does, it does get more challenging as time wears on, as content builds on the platform. Uh, but in general, one of the things that I see on a regular basis as I'm trolling through LinkedIn, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn every single day, and for me personally, it becomes a really, really fantastic source of curated news. So I choose who I uh, connect with on LinkedIn. I, I, I don't choose, I guess, crazy carefully. I don't have rules around who I connect with on LinkedIn in terms of there's a lot of people out there that I guess will only ever connect on LinkedIn with people that they physically met in person. Uh, I don't have any strict rules on that, uh, I guess, when people want to connect with me. Um, the first thing I check is I go to their profile, I make sure they're legit, they're not a bot, and it's not spam, and then they're not going to likely turn around and try to sell me something as soon as they've connected with me. Um, but other than that, I don't have a lot of strict rules with it. Uh, and for me personally, you know, if, if, if it's a friend of a friend, great. If it's somebody that I've met at a conference or an industry event, then great. If it's somebody that I haven't met but I know them through uh, a circle of, of, of contacts or a circle of friends or um, uh, an, an experience that we've had in common uh, or somebody that I just think is quite interesting or looks quite interesting and looks like we could have uh, a good conversation and share some good knowledge, then I'll go ahead and connect with them. So I don't really have those, those strict rules that some people have. But what I have seen a lot of through LinkedIn is people not leveraging LinkedIn to its fullest effect, not using it in all of the ways that it can be used. And I think people are really, really missing out. You know, for, my, for me personally, a lot of my friends, a lot of my connections, a lot of my colleagues, they use LinkedIn once every couple of years and they jump on, they refresh their, 
They refresh their profile like they would a CV whenever they're looking for a new role, whenever they're looking for a new job, when they're job hunting, uh, or maybe they've left the job already and they're just looking what their next opportunities are. Uh, they'll refresh their, their profile on LinkedIn and then they'll shoot that out there. They'll, they'll, they'll put a message on there saying, hey, looking for my next opportunity. Anybody know of roles going in this industry, um, et cetera, et cetera, or uh, recruiters, uh, connect with me, hit, hit me up, uh, tell me what you've got available. And, and I think that that, whilst that may have been the original intent or original goal of LinkedIn was to create effectively an online repository of CVs and allowing people to connect with each other on a professional level. I think it's grown a lot beyond that and, and I think that's evidenced by you know Microsoft buying them for 26 I think and a half billion dollars. Uh, there's obviously a tremendous value to LinkedIn and it's not just a value to um, the likes of Microsoft but it's a value to the people that use the platform. And I think what I've learned from the platform that hopefully will benefit you is the fact that the platform is a fantastic way to not only connect with people, but it's a, it's a fantastic way to share content. And it's a great way to share content in such a way that it has the ability to go viral, has the ability to be easily reshared by people. Um, simply open up a, a, an article, um, whether it be a LinkedIn Pulse article or a, a, an article that links out to another platform another news article, another blog, etc. Um, and once you open that up within LinkedIn, it allows you just with one click of a button to be able to share that to your network of friends. And so very, very similar, I guess, in functionality to something like Facebook. So it's kind of the professional version of, of Facebook. And it's quite interesting and ironic because so many of the posts on LinkedIn tend to gravitate towards slightly more personal, um, I guess, content nowadays. And you'll get people jumping on the bandwagon and saying, oh, this is, this is more appropriate for Facebook. It's not really appropriate for LinkedIn. I, I'm not here to really say or be the arbiter of what is or isn't suitable for LinkedIn. But certainly the target of the platform and certainly the target of most of the people that are on it are professional connections. Um, but once again, going back to that whole model of online CV, it just goes so much beyond that. Uh, to dedicated brand pages, which uh, nowadays, um, as always has been the case with LinkedIn, you have to associate those with an individual page. So an individual person's page, they can have a brand page that's associated uh, with them, um, but it has to be connected to an individual profile page. So there's no such thing as just pure business pages like there is with Facebook. So certainly being able to leverage that ability to create those brand pages associated with you and kind of uh, attached to your personal profile has big, big benefits for your personal brand, has big benefits for the companies you may own or work for, um, and it allows you to effectively have multiple pages nested within the one, within the one personal brand. So that, that's really a, a great way to leverage LinkedIn beyond the simple personal profile. Going beyond that, uh, it has a lot of the features that a lot of the social platforms out there have, the ability to embed video, the ability it, it pulls in thumbnails of your videos, um, and then it will pull in, if you're pulling in articles, it will pull in generally the title of the article and maybe a thumbnail image of one of the embedded images from that article. So, you know, there's, there's two different ways to create a post on LinkedIn, two primary ways. One is, one is to, to, to write a, effectively a status update. And that's where you embed content uh, from external sources, give a little bit of a, maybe an update of your personal activities, what you've been doing recently, maybe something you've got upcoming. I, I use LinkedIn quite a lot to advertise or market, if you were, a um, uh, meetup group that I help to run, which is a local e-commerce meetup group. And so I'll post that out there and I'll make sure and, and tag that appropriately with the right keywords to make sure it's found easily. Um, uh, the other way, once again, is, is to produce an article. So that article is evergreen content that will stay on the LinkedIn Pulse publishing platform and be available for anybody that, that chooses to follow you, whether it be actually to connect with you uh, as, a, as, a, as a network connection or whether it be just to straight follow. So LinkedIn now has the ability to straight follow uh, someone who may not even have the ability to connect with them or send them a connection request turned on. So a lot of your, your larger profiles, a lot of your larger celebrities, a lot of those people that are more well known, you can't even ask to connect with them. Um, but you can follow them and you can see the content that they're putting out. And you'll get notifications when they do um, upload and link new content into their feed. So those really are the, the major ways in which you can leverage LinkedIn far, far, far beyond the, the pure model of an online CV. So you can link out, you can link out 
to content from your profile. You can, it, when, you, when you post articles, when you post um, status updates, and you have the ability, obviously, within your entire profile to effectively give your professional background. So you have the intro. You also have the ability to control what you're, you're called, and you also have the ability to control the URL uh, and, and effectively the title that's part of your URL. And you, you can do that by editing your profile. And also, you can, you can edit the subtitle that sits underneath your name. Now, by default, it will pull the title of the the or the the company of the company that you're currently working for, but you can manually edit that. And so, what you want to do is you want to make sure that that title, that subtitle underneath your name, accurately represents what you're wanting to portray to the world, what your what your activities are, what you're involved in, what what is it, who is it that who you are as a professional, um, you know, as a professional, what is it that you want to put out there, what is it that you want to portray and convey to the wider world that you want to connect with as a professional. So make sure you, you go ahead and take all those opportunities to edit that. Fill out as much as your, of your profile as possible once you've kind of completed most of your profile. LinkedIn uh, considers it an all-star profile. You can start at that point, um, start getting some endorsements, and you, you, it, it, you can also get, start getting recommendations. So one of the most powerful features of LinkedIn is recommendations. You can actually solicit and request recommendations directly from within the platform. So you can go and you, you can request uh, specifically target someone, which effectively sends them like a like a message, and it will request that they provide you with um, a recommendation. And I and I definitely strongly recommend that you go down that path. If you if you're a professional and you're consulting with someone, for example, and you've done a good job and you're really proud of the work that you've done, um, you know, shortly thereafter, after you've completed a project, then by all means, go and ask that person that you you've been has been your primary point of contact that you've worked with to go and give you a recommendation about the kind of work that you've done, the kind of relationship that you've built, and the kind of value that you've brought to the table. And certainly, that's going to help um, build up the status of your profile, and it's readily visible when people visit your profile. All the recommendations that people have made against your name and against your profile. Endorsements, I think endorsements are actually highly overrated. You know, it, it, LinkedIn now limits the number of endorsements that you can have, so you kind of have to pick and choose which ones you accept. Um, I, I think endorsements are, are, you know, they have low value purely because they're so easy to give. You know, LinkedIn gives recommendations every time you log in and every time you visit somebody's profile, um, you know, it'll give recommendations of what you, you should be endorsing them for. And you know it's just a tick of a button, and it'll just scroll through all those different endorsements. So I think they got low value because they require low thought, and they require really no effort at all on your part, but just a, a a mouse click. So definitely recommendations, I think, have increasingly more important value because they're harder to give. They're 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 individually written. It's not just a click of a button. Um, you, people can either choose to give you one outright, or you can request one, and then they'll they'll make that effort to give you to give you a recommendation. So that's I would recommend that you definitely go out of your way to go and get as many recommendations as you can that are valid and are relevant to what you're trying to portray to the wider world. So hopefully that's given you a few tips of how you can use LinkedIn in a wider, broader sense than just an online CV. It is becoming more entwined in Microsoft CRM and in other platforms. Uh, you know, it's, it, most of the content is now being indexed by Google and a whole lot of other platforms as well. So do not neglect your LinkedIn profile. Try to update it on a regular basis. Even once a month is, is, is really good. Uh, obviously, if you can produce content on a regular basis for LinkedIn as well on the Pulse platform, it's just going to give you a broader reach. It's going to reach potentially a new audience that you don't reach through other social platforms that have more of a social bent versus a professional bent. So hopefully, these ideas um, have connected with you and hopefully you found them valuable. Go ahead and Go check out your LinkedIn profile today. See what it says about you. Make sure you're happy with it. Update it. Spend some time with it. And spend some time on LinkedIn. It's a great platform. It's a great way to connect with people. It's a great way to see curated content. So uh, go ahead and check out my profile if you like. Um, mine's not perfect, I guess, um, but I've tried to make sure and keep it current, keep it updated, and keep it reflective of who I am and what I'm trying to do. Another piece of functionality that I think you guys will find useful is the who has viewed your profile functionality. It's the number one used piece of functionality on LinkedIn. Apparently, it's the number one visited page or area of LinkedIn. 
and simply what that means is that when you visit someone's profile they'll be able to see that you have visited their profile it'll bring you to their attention and put you on their radar so that they may want to connect with you or follow you so there's um, there's there's effectively spam bots or software that can allow you to, to do that in an automated fashion based on specific queries across LinkedIn um, I'd recommend being authentic and genuine just like I recommend on all social platforms you being authentic and genuine people can smell bullshit a mile away so definitely go and visit those those uh, those profiles manually just go up into LinkedIn search search by search by vertical search by business search by company name search by individual name go and visit those profiles you will then be alerted or the the people that you visit the profiles that you visit will then be alerted that you visited those pages they can then in return check out your profile and if they find you interesting obviously they can choose to connect with you if they like so it's definitely a good way to put yourself on the radar of people that you may want to connect with or may be of interest to you to follow so hopefully you found this useful and talk to you guys soon cheers